this lesson, we will be looking at concentration quotient. This is based on Le Chatelier's principle. We will see how we can interpret the concentration quotient value and the shift in the direction of the equilibrium. That's what we are planning to do with this lesson. Two terms that we commonly use to interpret the value of the equilibrium constant or the concentration quotient expression is QC and KC. Let's take the equation H2 plus I2, reversibly giving you 2HI, and we can write the equilibrium constant expression like this, Kc is equals to HI the whole square divided by H2 raised to 1 and I2 raised to 1. Now, if you substitute the equilibrium concentration values for the reactants and products at 448 Kelvin, we may get a value of 50 as shown in this case. So, Kc is 50. If the value of the ratio of the products to reactants happens to be 40 at the same temperature, it means that the system is not in equilibrium. And this number is referred to as the concentration quotient QC. So every time I talk about concentration quotient, it's with reference to an equilibrium constant expression, the concentration of products to reactants. And if the value is different from that of the equilibrium constant, then we prefer to call it as concentration quotient. So we have already established that for this particular reaction, the equilibrium constant Kc is going to be 50. If this is true, we can say three things. One, if Qc is equals to Kc, the calculated value for the ratio of the concentration of products to reactants for the given system, happens to be the same as the equilibrium constant, it implies that the system is in equilibrium. The other possibility is Qc can be less than Kc. We have a smaller value for concentration quotient. And the third case is uh, the Qc can be greater than Kc. So in both of these cases, since the numerical value of concentration quotient is different from that of the equilibrium constant, the system is not in equilibrium, which means there will be reaction taking place where more of the reactants will change into products or more of the products will change back into the reactants and we will use a language called there is a shift in equilibrium or the rate of the reaction would be greater in one or the other direction. So here is a graphical representation. If you have a system in equilibrium, especially for the reaction that we have just talked about, if the system is in equilibrium, the amount of reactants and products that exist at the equilibrium state and the rate of the forward and the backward reaction would show a constancy. This represents a state of equilibrium. Now we are going to talk about shift in equilibrium with reference to that diagram. So if Qc is less than Kc, the Kc value for this reaction should be 50. But if Qc is less than Kc, the system is not in equilibrium. And if Qc is equals to 40 and Kc is 50, we have more reactants than products because Kc is a ratio of products to reactants. If the value of Qc is lesser than 50, it implies that we have more reactants than products. Then there would be a tendency in the reaction for more of the reactants to combine and change into products. And then we would say the equilibrium would shift right. So this is how the scenario looks like. When we calculated the Qc value, it was found to be 40, which is less than Kc, which implies that we have more reactants and less products. So the reaction will start to take place such that more of the reactants will start to change into products, or the rate of reaction for the forward direction would be greater than the rate of reaction for the backward reaction, because it's trying to produce more and more products so that the amount of reactants in the system would decrease until the system achieves the equilibrium state. So we would say equilibrium will shift right until Qc is equals to Kc. So every time the value of the, the concentration quotient is less than the equilibrium constant, the rate of the forward reaction increases. It starts to produce more products and we would say equilibrium would shift right. At equilibrium, we have 
the rate of the forward and the rate of the backward reaction, achieving a constancy. So now the system is back in equilibrium state. Let's look at the second scenario where the shift in equilibrium caused due to a larger value for QC. Now QC is greater than KC. This is the equation that we normally refer to. And here we have products over reactants. At 448 Kelvin, the equilibrium state would have been represented by KC value for 50. If QC is greater than KC, the system is not in equilibrium. So when you calculate the value of QC, if it is given as 60, which is greater than 50, we have more products than reactants. So if you have more products, the tendency would be for the products to be, for the products to change back into the reactants, or we would say the equilibrium would shift left, or the rate of the backward reaction would tend to increase. That's what would happen. So for the graphical representation, if you look at the system which has a QC value that is greater than KC, we have more products than reactants. So what would happen is more of the products would start changing back into the reactants, which means the backward reaction tends to increase or rate of the backward reaction increases, or we can say the equilibrium would shift left until more of the products start changing back into the reactants and the system would achieve equilibrium. So the language would be equilibrium will shift left until QC is equals to KC. And when that happens, more reactants are formed and more of the products are decomposing to give you back the reactants. And the rate of the backward reaction would be greater than the rate of the forward reaction at this time until the system achieves equilibrium. At equilibrium, the rate of the forward and the backward reaction would achieve constancy. And now there is no more difference in the rate of reaction. It shows a constancy at this time. So we can use concentration quotient to predict the direction of equilibrium if we are given values where we could calculate the concentration quotient and the equilibrium constant values. This is a consequence of Le Chatelier's principle.